In today's video, we're going to go over and review the entire story and quest line surrounding the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion's Fighters Guild. You might be wondering what I'm doing at the beginning of the game. All of my other characters have completely jacked up stats and gear that was acquired via console commands. To get the best experience possible and to give the best review possible, I decided to make a whole new character. I've only ever completed the Fighters Guild questline once, and that was many years ago. Apart from the first four or so quests, and which would usually be the only ones I'd complete, I don't remember much from the story, its characters, and quests. Unlike the Dark Brotherhood and the Arena, the Fighters Guild and the Thieves Guild are the main factions I never really experienced too much during my time playing this game. I wanted to cover the Fighters Guild sooner, but have never done a video that is going to be this size. However, I feel now that it's time to do so. The Fighters Guild, in a nutshell, is a faction dedicated to serving the citizens of Cyrodiil. Citizens can submit contracts and a payment to the Fighters Guild in exchange for their physical services. These contracts usually surround retrieving an item, rescuing somebody, eliminating threats from a specific area, etc. As suggested in the name, there's always some form of combat that goes along with these contracts, hence why ordinary citizens seek the help of these trained fighters. The guild has hubs all over Cyrodiil, and throughout our time rising through the ranks, we'll be bouncing around from city to city. I'll go over the surface level events that happen in each quest, and at the very end, I'll give my opinion and review on everything involving the Fighters Guild. For anyone curious on my new character's build, he's a Nord, and I picked the star sign of the Warrior. For major skills, I picked Blade, Block, Heavy Armor, Restoration, Athletics, Armorer, and Marksman. The playstyle I normally like to do and went for this time round involves heavy, close range damage, particularly with long swords, and a strong defense for support with heavy armor and a shield to match. I don't plan on stopping in town too often to stock up on items, so I made sure that my restoration is at a decent level for self healing and that I could repair my gear on the fly with the armorer skill. I hate being slow in these games, so I added athletics for the speed boost and fatigue buffs. Finally, I didn't know what other skill to pick and I really didn't plan on using ranged attacks too much, but I decided to go with Marksman as my 7th major skill. This way, I can use hotkeys and fire off a few attacks before enemies are able to reach me. With that, we just escaped the sewers and we can now journey to join the Fighters Guild. We begin by fast traveling to one of the major cities. As a brand new player, we likely would have only heard of the Fighters Guild through rumors or sheer curiosity. But since we already know about the faction's existence, I decided to head straight for one of the hubs, and in this case, it was Coral. Contrary to what I said in the intro, I did do a little inventory dump at the general store and the smiths, not only to get some gold but to lighten up my character's weight a little bit. After that, I shot straight for the guild. Speaking to Madrin Orin of the guild, he tells me I have to speak to one of three people in order to enlist. Either Valena Daunton in Coral, Azan in Anvil, or Burr's grow cash in Shadenhall. Fortunately for me, Valena was upstairs so all I had to do was go up there and speak with her. Joining was as simple as that which I actually liked. She gave us the choice of which contract to do first, one in Anvil or one in Shadenhall. I picked the one in Anvil. I fast traveled to the southwestern major city and made my way to the guild hub. I went upstairs to find Azan near the dining area. He gave us our first contract, which he said involved rats and a woman named Arvena Thales. We set out to Arvena's house immediately and entered inside. Speaking with her, she was hysterical about her pet rats in the basement. Apparently, something is down there killing them and she wants us to find out what it is. We head down there and see a bunch of docile rats. Among them is a starving mountain lion. The mountain lion is attacking and killing the vermin, so we attack and kill it instead. Once that's done, we head back upstairs and inform her of the lion's presence. She's worried that more will come and asks us to seek out an experienced hunter to the region, Pinaris Inventius. We leave her house and Pinaris's is just down the street. We enter inside and inform him that there are mountain lions in the area. He thinks that's odd, but tells us to follow him to where he thinks they might be. After a lengthy walk with him, we stop just outside of the city's northern gate in a secluded area. In some tall grass and surrounded by boulders, four starving mountain lions are eyeing us down. We begin attacking them with Panaris. They aren't too difficult, but when four of them are attacking us at once, we do have to keep an eye on our health. We successfully slay the lions and report back to Arvena. Thinking she'll be happy with the news, she's actually quite frightful, as there's another mountain lion in the basement. We go back down there to check it out, and there is indeed another. 
We slay the animal and speak again with Arvena. She has her suspicions that this was caused by her neighbor, Quill Weave, and asks us to keep an eye on her. I left Arvena's house and waited for 8am until Quill Weave would likely leave her house. Unfortunately, I was just too late and came across a piece of venison left outside of Arvena's backyard and Quill Weave was walking away, yet no quest update. I waited for 24 hours in the backyard and with around 11 hours left, the quest auto updated saying I witnessed Quill Weave placing the meat. I confronted her and she said she only meant to lure the rats outside and that she never intended for mountain lions to show up. We're then offered a choice, either tell Arvena the truth or lie to help out Quill Weave. I chose to tell Arvena the truth. In return, Arvena gave me 100 gold for completing the contract as well as a free lesson in speechcraft, thus ending the Fighter's Guild quest, a rat problem. Remembering what Valena told us, we leave the city of Anvil and fast travel to Shadenhall for the other contract from Burr's Grokash. We arrive in the city and shoot straight for the guild hall. Burr's, a grizzled older orc, isn't too friendly to us. He informs us that our next contract is to bring a shipment of weapons over to a place called Desolate Mine. We're given a steel bow and some arrows, a steel warhammer, and a steel longsword. Desolate Mine is slightly northwest of the city, so I traveled to the stables and walked the rest of the way. Arriving at the cave, outside was a station goblin that we quickly dispatched. Entering inside of Desolate Mine, just past the entrance, a group of three warriors could be found around a fire. Speaking with Rihanna the Red Guard, she says that there are goblins inside the mine that need to be killed. We give her the bow and then speak with the other two members. We get to pick which weapon to give each member. They make it pretty clear on the weapons they want, so I gave Elador the sword and Brag Grobarg the warhammer. Together, all four of us stormed off into the rest of the mine and began clearing out the goblins. Along the way, a bunch of corpses belonging to the dead miners were laying on the ground. Most of the time, the other three would go aggro a room of goblins and then leave, leaving the fighting to me, which I didn't mind too much for the skill leveling. Eventually, I got a journal update saying all of the goblins have been killed and that I should return to Burrs in Shadenhall. I left the cave and fast traveled back to the city. Entering inside of the hub and finding Burrs, he mentions that he's disappointed about the casualties. I'm assuming one of the fighters died in the mine, but I didn't see any of the outcomes of their battles. He rewarded me with only 80 gold this time, likely penalizing me for the deaths. I asked him for further work and he said there isn't any more at my rank. I then asked about an advancement and we were promoted from associate to apprentice, thus ending the Fighter's Guild quest, The Desolate Mine. Burrs had just told us that Azan and Anvil might have more work for us at our current rank, so I left the guild hall and fast traveled back to Anvil. I entered inside this guild hall and proceeded to wake up Azan in his private quarters. I asked for more work and he mentioned that a shopkeeper by the name of Norbert Lels needed some help. Norbert runs a shop called Lels' Quality Merchandise. Lately, he's been experiencing a string of break-ins and theft. We leave at once and travel to the Anvil docks to the shop. Inside, we speak with Norbert Lels. He says that the thieves keep breaking in via lockpick and they come at night while he's asleep. He says he'll be at the Flowing Bowl until we've solved the problem. He promptly leaves and we're now alone in his shop. I quickly repaired my gear and armor, expecting the worst. The journal doesn't exactly say what time the break-ins would occur, so I waited until 12am to see what might happen. To my shock, when the wait was over, I was surrounded by three ruffians in fur armor crouched around me. They instantly aggroed me and the fighting began. My armor held up nicely and I was able to cut down one of them rather quickly. A Nord and a Dark Elf were left and they were getting some pretty good shots off at me. My health was going down, but I didn't feel it necessary to drink a potion. I cut down the Nord and things were looking a little dire against the Dark Elf. Fortunately, I was able to best him in combat and the threat was eliminated. I got a journal entry update and then left the shop. Norbert was staying at the inn right beside it, so I headed inside. Speaking to him, we tell him the threat is over and he remarks how all of the people we just killed actually worked for him in the past. He shrugs it off and thanks us once more by handing over 100 gold thus ending the Fighter's Guild quest, The Unfortunate Shopkeeper. At this point, I didn't have any clear instructions on who to talk to next, so I traveled back to the Anvil Guildhall and asked Azan for more contracts. He said that I needed to be promoted first, so I advanced to the rank of Journeyman. I asked him again if there were any contracts available, and he said I should report to Valena and Coral. I swiftly left the Guildhall and fast-traveled to Coral. Upon arriving, I made way for the Guildhall and entered inside. 
I found Vilena, and she said that from here on out, all of my duties will be handed to me by Majin Orin, the Dark Elf downstairs. Leaving the conversation, I found a better main weapon to use, a fine steel longsword. Beside it was a silver short sword, which was perfect in case I had to fight any spectral foes. I then descended down and spoke with Modrin. He said that one of our Fighters Guild brothers, Maglir, had recently defaulted on a contract. He's still over in Skingrad and we're asked to seek him out and find out why. We leave the hall and fast travel to Skingrad. Maglir can be found inside of the Westweald Inn. Entering inside, we see the Wood Elf and speak with him. He knows why we're there and admits to not fulfilling the contract. He was tasked with retrieving Brennus Astis' journal in a place called Fallen Rock Cave. He says he's not being paid enough money to step foot in there and that we're more than welcome to try. We agree to finishing the contract and set out for the cave. It's slightly northwest of the city, so we travel to the stables and walk the rest of the way. We arrive at the cave and enter inside. It's clearly called Fallen Rock Cave because large parts of the passageways have collapsed and experienced cave-ins. As for the enemies in here, it's mostly skeletons that we'll be fighting, and they're the hardest ones, which speaks volumes on Maglir's skill level. After clearing rooms and dropping down into chasms, we walk through flooded tunnels and fight some mud crabs. Just behind them, sitting in a carved out section, is Brennus' journal. We retrieve the journal and swiftly exit the cave. The game gives us two choices, speak with Maglir about the contract, or go directly to Modrin. I chose to travel directly to Modrin and show him that I had to finish the contract for Maglir. Modrin was disappointed with the Wood Elf and he didn't show much love for me either, but he paid us for our dues of 100 gold. Thus ending the Fighters Guild quest, unfinished business. Immediately, we speak again with Modrin to see about more duties. He tells us that some of the guild members down in Leowin have been causing a ruckus in one of the taverns. He asks us to find out why. We promptly leave the guild hall and fast travel to Leowin. At this point, I didn't have a compass pointing me anywhere, so I first tried to search for them at the guild hall, but they were nowhere to be found. However, while here in the guild hall, I managed to find an almost complete set of steel armor which I replaced with my iron armor. I even managed to find a silver longsword to replace with the silver short sword. I went to the Three Sisters Inn next and I couldn't find them there. Finally, I tried the Five Claws Lodge. Entering inside, tables and chairs were flipped over and three men clad in armor were drinking and cursing at the publican. I spoke with one of the men, Relian, and he said they're all upset over a rival group called the Blackwood Company. We're then directed to speak with one of the other drunk guildmates. Vantis. Vantis fills us in on what the Blackwood Company is. Originally, they were mercenaries sent by the Empire to reclaim territory back in Black Marsh. They failed and set up camp back in Leowin. Now, they're undercutting the Fighters Guild for contracts and engaging in lesser ethical affairs. We then suggest finding contracts to keep the guildmates busy and employed. Vantis says if we find work for them, they'll quit causing a ruckus at the lodge. The journal then tells us we should ask the citizens of Leywin if there's any work for the Fighters Guild. I turned to the publican, Witse Dutse, and attempted to persuade her. I failed and gave in to bribing her with some septums. She said someone in town by the name of Margart might be of interest. We leave the lodge and head for her house. Entering inside, we speak with Margart. She tells us that she loves alchemy and wishes she could collect more ingredients to experiment with. We ask her if she would like to hire anyone from the Fighters Guild to carry out such tasks. She says she needs help getting ogre's teeth and minotaur horns. She doesn't want to ask the Blackwood Company, but she also isn't sure if the Fighters Guild can be trusted either. She tasks us with bringing her five portions of ectoplasm in order to prove our competency. We agree and leave her home. The first place that came to my mind for easy access to ghosts was the haunted ship at Anvil's docks. I fast traveled there and made my way onto the ship. I couldn't go inside however without speaking to Varole and beginning the quest, the ghost ship of Anvil. We received the key to the serpent's wake and head inside. I was lucky that there was exactly five wraiths slash spectral sailors to be found on the ship. One was in the captain's quarters, two were in the mid deck, and two were found in the cargo hold. We managed to level up while in here, which was pretty great. They were tougher fights than expected, but I managed to dispatch of all of the wraiths, collecting the five ectoplasm samples. It was actually really easy to grab Verilay's crystal ball, which was located in a chest down in the cargo hold. I ascended the ship and exited to speak with the High Elf. We completed the Ghost Ship of Anvil and even received the leveled enchanted weapon of Red Wave. 
I fast traveled back to Leowin and went back to Margard's house. She was happy that we found the ectoplasm and decided to give the contracts for alchemical ingredients to the rowdy guildmates. I went back to Five Claws Lodge where Vantis and the men were excited to hear the news. They thanked us and we all went on our way. I fast traveled back to Coral and sought out Modrin for our report. He was surprised to hear the Blackwood Company was in Leowin, but nevertheless, we were rewarded with 100 gold, thus ending the Fighter's Guild quest, drunk and disorderly. I spoke again with Modrin to see if there was any more work I could do. He said I was ready for advancement, so we ascended to the rank of Swordsman. Asking again, he said that both Azan and Burrs have contracts for us. I left the Guild Hall and fast traveled to Shaden Hall, dealing with Burrs' quest first. We arrived in the city and I shot straight for the hub. I woke up Burrs and asked him for contracts. He mentioned that someone by the name of Bien Amelian needed something retrieved from her family's ancestral tomb and that I should get on it right away. I accepted and left the guild hall. I was surprised to see that where I needed to go was all the way down near Leowin. I fast traveled to the stables and decided to invest in a horse as a lot of the places we've been going to have been lengthier walks. We rode north along the road and soon arrived at the water's edge settlement. I dismounted the horse and headed on inside of her house. Entering and speaking with Bien, she says that her father incurred a large gambling debt, over 1,000 gold to be exact. He couldn't pay off the debt and thus was dragged off out of the house and into the night. She'd like us to retrieve the sword and cuirass of her grandfather, Brusif, and which she'll use to pay off the debt. We agree to the contract and leave her home. Looking at the map, the tomb isn't too far away from Water's Edge. It's just across the Lower Nibbin to be exact. We leave the horse because it doesn't swim very fast, and then we make our way to the ancestral burial grounds. Arriving at the tomb, there's a statue, some coffins, and tombstones around the site. We enter inside and the dungeon begins. The main enemies we face inside of the tomb are zombies and skeletons. The skeletons are certainly the easier of the two. The zombies have a little more health and hit a little bit harder, but their attacks are a little easier to predict. The first zone mostly comprises of passageways and small rooms. I got lucky with pulling a rope near the beginning which opened a secret passageway leading to the right area. There could have been other correct ways but I didn't bother to look. Eventually, I was led to a doorway which was the entrance to the second zone. Zone 2 is a lot shorter and through battling a bit more undead enemies, we arrive at the sarcophagus area. A single ghost was in the middle and aggroed me, but one shot with red wave and it was done. Located on one of the tombs is the enchanted sword and armor. I received the journal update and proceeded to leave the tomb. I couldn't fully remember if there was a way to keep Brusev's gear, but I decided just to hand it over and to be done with it. I fast traveled back to Bien's house and she was extremely thankful for her help. I left the house and fast traveled back to Shaden Hall. I spoke with Burrs and informed him that the contract was complete. He was a little more pleased this time than the last. We were also paid out a sum of 100 gold. Thus ending the Fighter's Guild quest, Amelian's debt. Remembering what Modrin had told us, it was time to head to Anvil and speak with Azan about her next contract. I promptly left the hub and fast traveled to Anvil. I entered inside of the guild hall and spoke with Azan. Asking about another contract, he mentions that there are more issues with thieves within the city. He doesn't know too much else however and says that we should ask around town for more information. He also mentions that we'll have a partner for this one, as he isn't too sure what we'll be up against. It turns out, our companion is none other than Maglir the Defector, the Bosmer we had to finish the Fallen Rock Cave contract for. Speaking with him, it's clear he still harbors some bad blood against us due to throwing him under the bus, albeit deservingly. Together, we leave the guild and approach a guard. He says he doesn't know us well enough to discuss the topic of thieves, so I grease him up a bit with some septums. He then tells us that we should speak with Nuheim the Portly, a resident Nord who was most recently stolen from. We depart the conversation and run down the street to Nuheim's house. It was 7pm but the door said I'd be trespassing so I waited for around 12 hours and we could finally go inside. Entering in, we spoke with Nuheim. He mentions that a bunch of wood elves robbed him of a family heirloom and that they're held up inside of Hirota Cave, a cavern that's just north of the city. We then get a quest update for the Fighter's Guild contract telling us to head to Hirota Cave and clear out the thieves. Interestingly though, we have to inquire more about Newheim's family heirloom to receive an additional quest, which actually involves retrieving it. He says it's a flagon that's been passed down from generations within his family, and it's the best for keeping mead cold. A very Nord-like answer. We leave his house and fast travel to the stables. 
Given the cave's proximity and Maglir following us, I didn't bother taking the horse there. We arrive at the cave and enter inside. The dungeon only has one zone. I didn't count exactly how many Bosmer we had to kill, but I'd say it was around 10 thieves. Their skills ranged from archers to brawlers to conjurers all the way to warriors. Maglir was honestly a big help. More often than not, we were fighting two or three at a time, and he was able to either pull one of them off of me or make quick work of whoever was focused on attacking me. There were times where my health was around half gone, but usually that was at the end of a big fight, having killed three Bosmer. My strategy was to swing like a madman and focus more on heavy attacks, which did the trick. The zone is relatively straightforward, and the final area sees three thieves in an open space with a chasm in the middle. After we dispatched of them, the quest updated and said all of the thieves were dead and that we can report back to Azan. I switched over to Newheim's quest, Newheim's flagon, and the heirloom was sitting on a table right there in the chasm. I snagged it and then Maglir and I left the cave. Once outside, we traveled back to the docks to hand Newheim his heirloom. He was thankful for us retrieving it and rewarded us with three bottles of alcohol. Then, we traveled to the fighter's guild hall and spoke with Azan. He said he was really happy with our progress and then rewarded us with 100 gold each. I attempted a shot at advancement and it was granted, ascending us to the rank of Protector. Thus ending the Fighter's Guild quest, Den of Thieves. For those keeping track, that was our 7th quest completed for the Fighter's Guild. I returned to Azan and asked him about doing more work. He responded saying Madrin Orin wants to see us in Coral. I exited the conversation, left the guild hub and fast traveled to Coral. I shot straight for the guild hall and began speaking with Modrin. He said that this next task was meant to stay between the two of us. He wants us to go on a mission with Varanus Danton, Velena Danton's son. He fears that Varanus is too soft and will never become a seasoned warrior due to Velena's coddling. The coddling was brought on by the Danton family's most recent loss, Vitellus Danton, Velena's eldest son. So without her knowing, we're supposed to accompany him to Nonwill Cavern and find a lost guildmate named Galtus Previa. We agree to the quest and leave the guild hall. Varanus' house is close to the hub, so we make our way there quickly. We enter inside and Varanus is suited up and ready to go. We can tell by his dialogue that he's a little unsure of his abilities. He also wants to tell his mother what we're up to, but I responded saying we're in a hurry and that there's no time. He began following me and I exited Coral's north gate. The cavern wasn't too far north, but I took a chance riding the horse there. I had to get more uses out of my investment after all. I arrived at the cavern and Varanus was nowhere to be found. I waited a bit and he still didn't show up. I entered the cavern thinking he might already be in there and he wasn't. As I turned to leave, three trolls ran up behind me and gave me quite a good scare. I exited the cave and two of them followed. To my surprise, killing the trolls wasn't too difficult and they didn't deal too much damage. I re-entered the cave and killed the third troll. I left again and waited around for Varanus, but he wasn't showing up still, so I decided to fast travel to the northern gate to see if he would reappear. Quite comically, when I spawned in, Varanus' body was thrown to the ground and rendered him unconscious. I was relieved on the accounts that I found him, and that he was an essential NPC for this quest, so he couldn't die. Making sure he was following me, I fast traveled back to Norwell Cavern and he spawned with me. Together, we entered inside. Immediately. Varanus unsheathed his sword and charged off into the dungeon. I followed him to see what would happen and he led us to a rat in which he struck down. Soon thereafter, there was a doorway leading to the next zone. We ventured further and were quickly face to face with an ogre. The ogre beat down Varanus with one blow and he actually humbled me and bested me in combat. I reloaded the autosave and Varanus charged off at the rat again. We repeated the same events of him getting beat down by the ogre, but this time I played it more defensively, strategically blocking his hits and attacking right after with Red Wave. Soon, Varanus got back up and together we bested the ogre. There was another ogre in the same room, Varanus got his teeth kicked in, but this one got stuck on some rocks so I managed to cheese the fight. Venturing further, we arrived in an open room with three trolls. Again, trolls were some of the easier enemies in here so we dispatched of them. The common theme is that Varanus would run off and then I get a message saying he's unconscious, followed by a troll sprinting at me from an unknown location. I fought through more beasts and arrived in a small room with the corpse of Galtus Previa. He was fighting in fishing waders for some reason which didn't make a lot of sense. Beside him was a broken shield which was quite interesting. I got the quest update saying to report back to Modrin so I swiftly left. I got lost a little bit but managed to find my way out. Varanus, however was nowhere to be found. 
I exited the cave and fast traveled back to Coral. Speaking with Modrin, he remarked how odd it was that Galtus' body was so intact, and not eaten. He also thought it was strange there were no beasts around his body. Regardless, he thanked us for helping Varanus and rewarded us with 100 gold and an enchanted longsword called Longsword of Weariness, thus ending the Fighter's Guild quest, The Master's Son. Turning again to Modrin for more duties, he mentions our old pal, Maglir, has defected on yet another contract. Similar to last time, Modrin isn't sure why. He says that Maglir was supposed to do an assignment for a mage in Breville, but he hasn't reported for duty. We're then tasked with checking in on the Bosmer yet again. We leave the guild hall and fast travel down to Breville. The journal doesn't tell us where Maglir is, so I stop by the guild hall first. Looking around, he was nowhere to be found. I spoke with the porter though, and he said Maglir was last seen at the Lonely Suitor Lodge. I thanked him, then headed on my way. Walking across town, I soon arrived at the inn. Sure enough, Maglir could be found inside. This time, he had a new look. In fact, he was donning the Blackwood Company's armor and shield. Speaking to him, he was extra sour towards us and said he's now a member of the Blackwood Company. He complained that the Fighters Guild wasn't paying well and didn't have enough work to go around. I had the choice of disgracing him or simply inquiring about his contract. I chose the latter. He didn't reveal too much about the details and he also brought up how we ratted him out last time he defaulted. After this, he refused talking to me further. Getting a better look at Maglir and his buddy's shield, it actually looked quite familiar. Was that the same one near Galtus' previous body in Nonwill Cave? I, I couldn't quite remember, but just decided to leave the inn. I fast traveled back to Coral to report this to Modrin. He was angry to say the least. He then demanded that we finish the contract and gave us the details for it. A mage by the name of Aryari in Breville contracted us for work, so we leave the guild hall and travel down to Breville again. As a side note, I know it's such a minor detail, but I love the idea of the different guilds interacting and employing one another for their services. Anyway, I arrived at the Mage's Guild and spoke with the High Elf. She was displeased that the contract was taking so long to fulfill. We ask her what needs to be done and she responds that she needs 10 samples of Impgall. She then marks down a spot on our map called Robber's Glen Cave, saying imps have been known to linger around there. We leave the conversation getting right onto the task. I fast travel to the stables and rode my painted horse north along the road. At some point, I was stopped by a bandit who didn't even try to shake me down or anything. He just immediately started swinging. I made quick work of him and went back on my way. Soon, I arrived at Robber's Glen Cave and entered inside. This dungeon so far might have been the easiest one we've experienced yet. For starters, you don't have to explore the whole thing. I for sure didn't. All we need to do is kill 10 imps and loot their bodies for the gall. I will say, there were some enchanted items in some of the chests that at the very least fetched a hefty price, so the loot certainly wasn't bad, and in hindsight, more exploration could have been done, but for this video, I mainly want to focus on the tasks. Imps have got to be up there with some of the easiest enemies I've had to deal with while being a part of the guild. They don't hit very hard, and in either 4 normal attacks or 1 heavy, they would die. I didn't need to venture too far in to find 10 imps, and as soon as I collected all the gall, I left the cave. Now outside, I fast traveled back to Breville and shot for the Mages Guild. Our Yari was happy that we finally got to fulfill our services for her. She even rewarded us with an enchanted ring called Base Ring of Aegis, which shields for 12% on self. Leaving the guild, we fast traveled back to Coral and caught Modrin just in time before he left the hub. Reporting in, he's devastated that yet another member of the guild has defected over to join the Blackwood Company, which is the first time we're hearing of this. He pays us 100 gold and says it's time to finally talk about the Blackwood Company. Inquiring about it, he says that they used to be a small mercenary group until someone by the name of Riza Carr took over. Modrin says that Riza Carr was able to secure the company massive contracts from the Empire. One of them was to retake territory in Black Marsh, like we previously heard, but after that went sour, they set up shop in Leowin. He says that the company should be looked further into, but first, we need an advancement. Asking about it, we ascend it to the rank of Defender, thus ending the quest, more unfinished business. Speaking again with Modrin, he says that he's got something for us to do, but this one's off the record. It's best we meet him at his house while it's still dark out to discuss it. We exit the conversation, and I decided to wait an hour for him to get into his house. I ran across town and ended up inside of his shack. 
Speaking with him, he says he's been looking into the Blackwood company and some disturbing allegations made against them. We ask why they're so effective and he responds with the notion that they'll stop at nothing to get the job done and don't consider their morals. When we ask why they haven't been stopped, he says that Valena Danton has been erring on the side of caution as more guildmates keep perishing. We then ask about someone by the name of Azani Blackheart. Majin replies saying that he was the start of Valena's caution, as her eldest son Vitellis died on that mission. The guild was contracted by a wizard named Argoth to retrieve an artifact in which Azani had taken. 20 guildmates went into that dungeon and only 5 came out, unsuccessful with the retrieval. Apparently, some time later, Modern found out that the Blackwood Company had successfully completed that contract. Even more peculiar, the wizard Argoth was found dead, and the artifact was now missing, insinuating it could have been a setup by the Blackwood Company. Where this involves us, is he wants us to tag along to the original battlegrounds and look around for Azani Blackheart or the Blackwood Company. It is off the record, so we're offered the choice. We agree to work off the books. We tell him we're ready to go and he says he'll meet us in Leowin. We leave the guild hall and fast travel to the city. Arriving at the hub, I search for a bed and level up, putting points into strength, endurance, and willpower. Right after, I find Modron and tell him I'm ready to go. Together, we set out for Arpenia. Arpenia is well north of the city, so because I had Modron following me, I fast traveled to the Emelian tomb and walked the rest of the way. The walk was lengthy, but rather uneventful. We arrive at the alien ruin and a black horse courier ran up to us fleeing from some bandits. This was when I saw firsthand that Modron was an absolute killing machine. In one or two hits, he killed both the bandits with his mace. Together, we entered inside of the ruin. The dungeon was rather interesting. In terms of enemies, we're only facing mud crabs and rats. Modron was a beast and would kill anything before I can even get my weapon out. Even when I tried to help, I usually ended up just attacking him instead, and vice versa with him accidentally casting silence on me. We explored the ruin a great bit. I wasn't sure what to expect and maybe should have spoken with Modron more to verify what we were even doing there. I was extremely thorough in checking every room and looting all of the chests. I completely filled out the map and there was no sign of a Zani or anything besides crabs and rats. Finally, I gave in and spoke with him just for him to say this. Nothing. I knew it. Azani Blackheart isn't here, alive or dead. The bastards. There was no battle. Azani must have made a deal with the Blackwood Company. My guess is that they paid him off. They get the weapon for Argoth, collect the payment, and tell Azani where the mage is. Easy for Blackheart to retrieve the weapon and collect on it. We find Blackheart and get that weapon. We'll finish this contract and let all of Cyrodiil know what happened here. Blackheart has a fascination with these alien ruins. There's one northeast of here, Atatar. My bet is that he moved his base there. I'll lead. We'll show them. If what Modron said is true and the Blackwood Company really did that, they're no better than a bunch of bandits. If anything, they're worse than bandits. I was at least happy that we can move on now, but my mistake was not telling him closer to the exit. Now, I was forced to follow him around and he was moving at a brisk walk. This was definitely a test of the player's patience because oh boy, it was awful following him to the next ruin. He was just so slow and if you go too fast or too slow, he'll stop and wait for you to come back to him. Eventually, we made it to the new ruin of Adatar and entered inside. Thankfully, we're the ones leading the charge now and we take point. Pretty quickly, we see some dead rats and activated traps, which shows there are, or at least were signs of life here. We soon come across some bandits and the dungeon truly begins. Atatar is bigger than Arpenia. There are more zones and it's certainly a little bit more confusing and filled with booby traps. The hardest enemies we face in the beginning are bandits. Like mentioned before, Modron is a killing machine and could often even one-shot the bandits. Often, him and I would get split up because of a shortcut that I decided to take, but he would always find his way back. Through a few more traps, bandits, mud crabs, and rats, we finally found ourselves at the door leading to a Zani Blackheart. We enter through and there he is. 
He's donning Elven armor and even has the legendary Elven Claymore, Sinweaver, which could be the artifact that Argoth wanted. I got pretty lucky in this fight. Modron tanked most of the attacks and together we swung away at Blackheart. He could have been a pretty difficult foe if we were alone or if we were the ones to take aggro, as he had a lot of health and dealt plenty of damage. Finally, we were able to strike him down and we got the quest update saying Azani Blackheart was dead. I looted Sinweaver and it had a weight total of 50 pounds, which was incredibly heavy and put me way over the weight limit. I dropped a few things and made room for it, but I'll have to do a dump when back in town. Quite comically, I started speaking with an unconscious Modron. He's happy Azani is dead and that our fallen brothers have finally been avenged. He then asks us to take Blackheart's ring as proof of the kill. We go to the body, take the ring, and give it to Modron. He's going to use it to throw the Blackwood Company under the bus for their lies and crimes, and claim we were the ones to kill Azani Blackheart. He then says that he'll meet us back in Coral. I noticed the advancement dialogue was filled out and inquiring about it, we rose to the rank of Warder, thus ending the quest, Azani Blackheart. Tucked away in a side room, Azani had a bit of a treasure hoard, so before leaving, I looted everything of value. It honestly took me a while to find my way out of Adatar. The passageways were a little confusing, and the local map wasn't super helpful for telling me which pathways were elevated. Soon, I made my way out and fast traveled back to Coral. Arriving back in the city, I sought out Modron, who told me there wasn't any work for me right now, and that I should try Burrs or Azan again. I swiftly left the hub and fast traveled over to Anvil. Then, I made my way for the guild. Seeking out Azan, he mentioned that someone by the name of Alante of Alanor needed our help. Apparently, Alante is researching Daedra worship and might have found a long lost Daedric shrine down in Brittle Rock Cave. We're to meet her there and escort her through the dungeon. We leave the conversation and go on our way. I decided to dump some of my gear first at Morvane's Peacemakers and the Count's Arms to lighten up my load a bit in case there would be more loot. After doing that, I fast traveled to the stables, mounted my horse, and made my way north. Along the way, we encountered some wolves, but that was really about it. Soon, I arrived at Brittle Rock Cave and went inside. Elante was waiting for us at the entrance. We spoke with her and she reiterated that she believes there's a Daedric Shrine somewhere in the depths of this cavern. She just needs us to take care of any threats that we encounter. Honestly, I really enjoyed this one. The tone in which Elante speaks to us with and her demeanor screams that she's hiding other intentions, but if so, they never do come to light. There are multiple zones to this cave, but we only need to bring her through the first one. Along the way, we encountered some scamps. I imagine if I was a higher level, they'd be different forms of more powerful Daedra. Sinweaver cut through enemies like butter. It honestly made the fighting all too easy. Some may not like it, but this was another contract that involved us following an NPC who was walking rather slowly. For me, it added to the whole suspense of everything that was going on. Again, maybe it was just due to my own perceived outcome of events that might happen, but something seemed off with her. Eventually, we arrive in an area that clearly has a broken and destroyed shrine to one of the Daedric Princes. She speaks to us saying just a bit further, and then in literally a few steps, she turns around and thanks us and says she's going to stick around to study a little bit longer. Again, I love it because it really does feel like she has nefarious intentions, but it's not something that we find out. She gives us a book as a reward, and then we're free to leave the cave. I exited the cavern and fast traveled back to the city. Inside the hub, I spoke with Azan who rewarded us with 100 gold for completing the contract, thus ending the Fighter's Guild quest, The Wandering Scholar. Now it was time to go and see if Burrs had a contract for us out in Shadenhall. I left the guild hall and fast traveled over to the eastern city. I always have more trouble locating Burrs than I do Azan and Modron. I looked around and even waited for a few hours, and he was nowhere to be seen. Finally, I went to the basement where he was most likely doing some sparring because I found him there. Speaking with him, he did have another contract for us, which was good. He said that recently, some criminals had broken out of prison in the city of Breville, and have since been terrorizing the locals. The local watch is no use, so it's up to us here at the Fighters Guild to try and step up. He warns us that they could be a tough fight, and with that, we leave the conversation. We step out of the hub and fast travel over to Breville. I approach the captain of Breville's guard and ask her about the fugitives. I find it pretty funny that she was unwilling to speak to me about it, needing some form of persuasion. 
We toss a few septums her way and she starts talking. She says that there are four of them held up in a nearby cave called Bloodmain Cave. She too reiterates that they're tougher than they look. Bloodmain Cave is relatively close to the city, so we fast travel to the stables and rode the horse a short distance west. We reached the cave and the compass markers updated showing two different entry points. I thought it was odd, but ignored it and wandered in. In this dungeon, all we have to do is kill the four fugitives and it's pretty straightforward. The zone is relatively large and void of any life. The first person we encountered was a Nord named Hjolfgar. He wore leather armor and fought me with a steel mace. He might have posed more of a threat if I had lighter armor on, but a couple swings with Sinweaver and Hjolfgar was dead. Venturing further in, the next enemy was a red guard warrior named Ashanta, who ended up triggering some rolling logs and died from the impact, making her the easiest kill so far. The final two fugitives were in another zone, and looking at the map, it made sense why there were two points of interest before entering inside of Bloodmain Cave. There was a second way inside of the system, and in this case, it would be our way out. The next fugitive was an Argonian archer named Dritle. Once I found my way up to him, a few slashes with the elven claymore and he too was dead. The final fugitive, a high elf conjurer named Enrian, was found in a relatively open area. There was a chance he could have overwhelmed me with his zombie and swift dagger attacks, but I managed to cut him down before the zombie could reach me. With that, all four fugitives were killed and we could now leave the cave. I exited via the second entryway and fast traveled back to Shadenhall to find Burrs. I think I found Burrs' hiding spot. The arrow pointed me to Burrs standing on one of the grassy knolls between the bridges, just staring off into the water. Speaking with him and reporting in, he seemed more open and friendly with us, showing some good character progression from when we first met him. He rewards us with 100 gold and I ask him about an advancement. He grants us the rank of Guardian, thus ending the Fighter's Guild quest, The Fugitives. Speaking with Burrs again, he mentions that Modrin has asked to speak with us in Coral. We thank him and head on our way. Fast traveling there, we seek out the Dark Elf within the Guild Hall. Inside, we talk to him and ask him for more duties. He mentions that he recently sent a group of fighters off to kill some trolls in Forsaken Mine, but they haven't been heard from since. Among them was Varanus Daunton, Valena's last living son. We're tasked with heading to the mine and checking in to see what happened, but more importantly, if there are any survivors. We agree to the task and leave the hall. Forsaken Mine is all the way down near Leowin, so we fast travel to some nearby stables and rode the horse around the side of the castle. Eventually, we arrive at Forsaken Mine, having to only have killed one stray imp along the way. Entering inside the mine and wandering down a bit, we're met with a truly gruesome sight. Bodies and bodies of our dead brothers and sisters lay lifeless and in pools of blood on the ground. Occasionally, the odd rat will appear from a corner and attack us, but those are quick to dispatch. The further we go in, the more bodies of our fighter's guildmates we discover. I almost didn't catch it, but towards one of the later areas with bodies, laying among them was someone in a familiar set of armor. Looking closely, I was honestly surprised to see it was a member of the Blackwood Company. My mind was racing thinking about what this meant. The Fighters Guild was sent here to clear out trolls. So far, there are no trolls, alive or dead, and all I see are dead guildmates. Then, lying with the fallen, is a member of our corrupt rivals, the Blackwood Company. In a moment of shame, I decided to swap my armor for the Blackwood Company mercenaries. I like the look of it better, and I'm not totally sure, but I think it either had better stats or was on par with my current steel armor. Turning the corner, staring me down, was a savage troll that instantly aggroed me. This only made it more confusing in my head as to what had actually went down, but whatever had happened, everyone ended up dying. Soon after, I ended up at a door that led into the next zone for the mine. Venturing through this zone, we fought more trolls and rats. The trolls honestly weren't too difficult, especially while using Sinweaver and its enchantment of fire damage. Soon after battling one more troll and a surprise mud crab, I laid eyes on the lifeless body of Varanus Daunton, the guildmaster's now dead son. Solemnly, I approached it and had a look around for what could have possibly happened. On his person was a bloody journal. Taking it and reading it, it recounts the events of Varanus over the last few months. It starts off when Vitellus, his older brother, died, detailing the grief of his mother and how he felt as well. The next entry talks about how for a full month he's been put on barracks duty, having an extremely boring and uneventful time. 
He did make a new friend named Edward though, and together, they made the days better for each other. The following entry details roughly the same feelings and thoughts he's had as the previous, and then the next one after that, he starts to wonder if he is a right fit for the Fighters Guild. He wonders if his mother sees him as a failure or doesn't believe in him as a warrior. The next entry is actually about us, and how happy he was to be able to go out on a mission with us. He also talks about how now Modron is his only hope for a contract, and these days, they're getting harder and harder to find due to the Blackwood Company. His friend Edward doesn't really think much of the company, however, detailing they're just mercenaries. Varanus thinks otherwise. The entries now detail that he's been told by Modron to go fight some trolls at Forsaken Mine, which is where we are right now. Both him and Edward got sent here with many more fighters. In the next entry, Edward is dead, and so is everybody else. The trolls were fine enough as a foe, but soon, the Blackwood Company came inside and started killing everything that moved. Men, myrrh, beasts, and creatures. He details the slaughter as inhuman. The company left as quick as they came. Varanus is now gravely wounded and flees deeper into the cave. In the final page, he writes that he hears trolls coming and he apologizes to his mother. We get a quest update and now we can leave the cave. Exiting the cave, we fast travel back to Coral in order to tell Modron the grave news. He's extremely upset about the situation and curses out the Blackwood Company. He tells us to lay low for now and that he will deal with the repercussions that come from Valena. Thus ending the Fighters Guild quest, Trolls of Forsaken Mine. We promptly left the Guild Hall and Modron to do the rest of his part. We have the choice of yet again taking a contract from Burrs or taking one from Azan. I decided to go to Azan. Traveling to Anvil, I visited Morvane's Peacemakers and Lel's quality merchandise to dump some more gear. After that, I went to the Guild Hall to speak with the Red Guard. Azan was the bearer of unfortunate news. He wasn't pleased to inform us, but due to our actions with Modron and the resulting casualties, including that of Varanus, we were demoted to the rank of Defender. As for Modron, he was completely expelled from the guild. Azan says right now, the best we can do is to keep working on contracts to achieve the status we once had. We ask him for a contract and he's got one for us. Apparently, the Stone of St. Alicia was stolen from the chapel up in Bruma. We're to head there and see to its retrieval. Leaving the hub, we fast traveled to the northern city. I was excited to finally get a contract up in Bruma. I was getting a little tired of the southern aesthetic. We arrive in Bruma and walking into the chapel, we speak with an older red guard named Sirik. He tells us that the other night, a group of men were seen fleeing from the chapel and that was when the stone was discovered missing. We assure him we'll get it back and we leave the chapel. I was honestly surprised that there was a green compass arrow to work off of from a description as vague as they went east. Exiting the city, we hopped on the horse and traveled down the road to see what was waiting for us. Interestingly, it was a single bandit. Approaching slowly, he didn't seem to be aggressive towards us. I hopped off the horse and spoke with the Khajiit. Kashar is the last bandit left alive from the raiding party. Apparently, after they took the stone, they were ambushed by some ogres who killed the rest of his group and took the stone all the way out to an alien ruin called Sidor. He even marked it on the map for us. I decided to spare his life because he seemed extremely down and I wasn't 100% sure if we would get a bounty from it. I knew that if I was facing ogres, I would want Sinweaver to have a full enchanted charge. I traveled back to Anvil to see if anyone would charge it for me, but no one at the Anvil Mages Guild offered their services. Whilst there, I decided to sleep and level up at the Guild Hall, putting points into strength, willpower, and endurance. I then traveled to the Imperial City Market District and went to the Mystic Emporium. It was interesting that that was this character's first time in the capital city. At the Emporium, we purchased around 8 petty soul gems and juiced up Sinweaver. From there, I traveled back to Bruma, hopped on the horse, and set off east. It was actually quite far, even by horse. We passed by a lot of imps, but I couldn't be bothered to hop off and kill them, so we steadied the course. Eventually, we ended up at the alien ruin of Sador. Entering inside, I was actually quite nervous. Ogres are the only enemy so far that's given us trouble. Inside, I faced down about four ogres. They were relatively spread out, which was nice to deal with. Sinweaver certainly helped a lot. The fire damage did its part, and the reach with the claymore is exceptional, allowing me to land attacks from further back. The zone itself is rather small, and all we had to do was kill three ogres who were in the way of reaching a button. Pressing the button, it opened a gate, we dropped down, and snagged the stone. 
On the way out, there was an ogre blocking the path. This one got me down to about half health, but I was just swinging away and really didn't want to be in there anymore. Eventually, I exited the cave and fast traveled back to Bruma. Speaking with Siric again, he thanked us highly for returning the stone and gave us three health potions. We went on our way and fast traveled back to Anvil. Speaking with Azan, he was happy with our work and paid us 100 gold, thus ending the quest, the Stone of St. Alicia. Unfortunately, there was no new dialogue option for an advancement, so I left the guild hall and fast traveled over to Shaden Hall. Hopefully after completing some work for Burrs, he would be kind enough to restore our rank. Whilst in Shaden Hall, I couldn't find him at the guild hall and then remembered that he likes to stand by the water on the grassy knolls. Making my way there, I was lucky enough to be able to find him. Approaching him, he was about to say something kind to us, showing some real character development, but I accidentally interrupted it and he went back to his hardened old self. Asking him for work, he gives us a contract that was near and dear to him. One of his old family friends, Lord Rugdumpf, needs our help. Apparently, his daughter, Lady Rogbutt, has gone missing and we have to go and find her. We're to report to the Lord at his manor as soon as possible. We leave the conversation and fast travel over to a spot called Hidden Camp just in the Gerald Mountains which is right beside Sidor. Fortunately, from Hidden Camp to Lord Rugdump's estate, it was fairly quick by horse. We made our way there and entered inside of the manor. Rugdump was upstairs and we begin speaking with him. As a side note, it was really enjoyable to hear him attempt to speak all noble-like. It was quite comical and the writers did a great job with this incredibly minor detail. Stolen away. My suspension is that ogres have objected her. He says that his daughter, Lady Rogbutt, was taken away by some ogres who are known to roam the lands to the east. He'd like for us to get her back. We agree and head on our way. The best part about this quest, at least for me, was that we didn't have to venture off into a ruin or a cave or a fort or anything like that. The three ogres were within eyeshot of the manor and were just circling around Lady Rogbutt. I pulled the first one and hacked it down with Sinweaver. At this point, I think I've got the trick down for ogres and it works particularly well when using a weapon with long reach. I was able to not take any damage whilst fighting all three ogres and even with the last two, when I ended up pulling both of them, I kept a line of sight with only one, trapping the other one behind it. After killing both of the brutes, we spoke with Lady Rogbutt. She doesn't try as hard to act noble like her father and even resents the notion of being ladylike. We escort her back to the manor, bring her inside, and speak once more with Lord Rugdump. We is most pleased, ethified. You found my belabored daughter. I will tell Burr's Grogash about your indentures. Take this. It has been passed in my family for many generators. Again, he has some hilarious dialogue, but ultimately thanks us for our work and even rewards us with a unique weapon called Rugdump's sword. Now, we can leave the manor and fast travel back to Shaden Hall. Doing so, and entering inside of the hall to speak with Burrs, he rewards us for our work with 100 gold. I noticed the advancement dialogue was filled out, and asking about it, we ascended back to the rank of Guardian, thus ending the quest, the noble's daughter. Returning back to Burrs, it turns out he has another contract for us to fulfill. Apparently, some of the residents at the nearby settlement of Harlan's Watch have gone missing. We're to go there, speak with Jorana Thales, and find out what's been going on. We accept and go on our way. Fortunately, the settlement is right beside the city. It's connected by a short road, and you can see the castle walls from it. Arriving at Harlan's Watch, we dismount and speak with Jorana. She tells us that lately, the residents have been seeing glowing lights in the nighttime by the old swampy cave not too far from here. Those who have gone to investigate the lights haven't been seen since. She'd like us to go to the cave and see if we can find anyone. We assure her it will get done and disembark for the cave. The cave is relatively close to the settlement and we were able to make it there quickly by foot. Outside, there were three will-o'-the-wisps glowing and emitting light. I was actually worried with facing the wisps because they drained both health and magicka pretty effectively. They were certainly a tough match and got close to besting me, but using Sinweaver, I was just swinging like a madman until they were all dead. Once defeated, we got a journal update saying we should go inside to look for any survivors. I was nervous if we'd see more wisps, but upon entering inside, I was relieved to see that there were only trolls, as backwards as that sounds. The first zone is relatively small. We began with killing more swamp trolls. 
the fire enchantment on Sinweaver was really coming in handy. Soon, we arrived in a little side room. After killing a troll in there, we saw a pile of variously decomposed bodies. Coming closer, I got a journal update saying that we should clear out all of the trolls so no one else gets harmed. Slowly and methodically, I went through the first zone and killed any troll that we'd come across. Eventually, Sinweaver lost its charge and its durability wasn't doing so hot either, but we kept moving. Eventually, we came across a second zone and inside of that one, there were plenty more trolls to kill. I definitely felt like this mission was a test of our combat skills as this might be the largest amount of adept enemies we faced at once. Soon, I killed what I thought were to be all of them and even found another exit point but didn't get the quest update. It took me a while, but backtracking to the first zone and going to a previously unexplored area, we found the final two trolls. Killing them gave us the journal update and we were now free to leave the cave. Once outside, I fast traveled back to Harlan's watch to speak with Jorana. She was saddened to hear of everybody's death, but thanked us for our help and rewarded us with an enchanted ring called the Mind and Body Ring. We left our house and fast traveled back to the city. Speaking with Burrs, he rewarded us with 100 gold and said that him, nor Razan, have any more work for us to do. We asked for an advancement and we got promoted to the rank of Champion now outranking Azan and Burrs. Finally, Burrs subtly and discreetly mentions that our old friend, Madrin Orin, is looking for us and that we should seek him out. Thus ending the quest, Mystery at Harlan's Watch. We leave the Shadenhall Guildhall and fast travel over to Coral. Excitedly, I'm hoping that Madrin has more information to offer in the Blackwood Company. We arrive in town and we head over to his house. Speaking with him, he gives us a warning of sorts. The tasks that we're about to do are off the books, forbidden, and will likely get me expelled from the guild if Elena were to find out. At this point, I really don't mind and have the same mindset as Madrin. I want to put the rest of our efforts into taking down the Blackwood Company. We ask him what he wants us to do. He says that we need to look for someone by the name of Ajum Kajin. Apparently, this Argonian mage and a small band of Blackwood Company mercenaries are expanding out into an area called Glade Mist Cave. Ajum is a high-ranking member of the company, so if we can storm in there and bring him back alive for questioning, we might be able to find out more information. We agree to the task and set off. Unfortunately, the killing machine himself, Modron, won't be coming with us to this one. We fast travel to the stables, mount our horse, and travel on a direct path to Glademus Cave. Eventually, we arrive there and enter inside. For this dungeon, we finally get to fight some Blackwood Company members. This is one of my gripes with the questline, the fact that it's taken us so long to have any form of confrontational interactions with our corrupt rivals is mind-boggling. Venturing through the cave, there's only one zone that we need to work with. Most of the members we come across fight together in pairs. They're actually pretty tough fights, especially when they're working in unison. The archers really aren't a big deal, but the fighters using two-handed weapons are crazy strong. The first pair we killed, I managed to loot a better bow off of the archer, a bow of burning. The next fight is where things got a little tricky. I was facing down two archers, which was fine. I'd just fire pot shots off at them until they're low enough. But one fell down into a chasm, and when I saw him again, he brought three of his friends wielding two-handed weapons with him. The first one we killed easily. The other two though arrived together and began attacking in unison. I turned around to move to a better vantage point and there was another archer firing shots at me. We were battling four mercenaries at once. I had to pop a lot of health pots here and I needed to constantly move backwards, distancing myself from the swinging weapons. Eventually, we cut down the archer, then one of the melee users fell, then the second one died, and finally the last archer was killed. The only nice part about that experience is that that was literally the rest of the enemies in Glademus Cave taken care of. After some short wandering, we came across an Argonian in noble clothes. Speaking with him, he surrendered to us and said he'd come willingly. Together, we left the cave and fast traveled back to Coral. Arriving back at Madrin's house, he tells us that we need to interrogate the Argonian for more information. I really like this part because we sat down at Jum Kajin and then just got to wail on him until he spoke. If your character has some charming abilities, I think that would have been another option to choose from, instead of resorting to violence. But beating him up was a pretty entertaining experience. About half of his health was gone and he decided to talk. We could ask him one of three questions. I chose to ask how many members they had, 
and he said over 100, and their size grows every day. I had to beat him up a bit more, and then we got to pick from one of two questions. I asked where they got their strength from, but he refused to tell me that one. I then asked who their leader was, and he said that it was Riza Carr, a name we've heard of before. At this point, he refused to tell us anything more, and flames engulfed his body. He had put on an enchanted ring which led him to burning to death. Speaking with Modron, he said that this information will be very useful. He rewards us with an enchanted amulet called the Lesser Amulet of Interrogation, thus ending the quest, Information Gathering. We speak again with Modron and ask him what he'd like us to do next. He says that although the interrogation was helpful, we need to learn more about the company. He says our next task is to infiltrate the Blackwood Company by joining their ranks. We're to travel to Leywin to their hub and enlist. We agree and set off on our way. I actually found this concept really cool. It reminded me of the main quest where we had to join the Mythic Dawn. Arriving in Leowin, I ran over to their hub which was locked down for the night. Waiting until morning, we entered inside. Upstairs, we spoke with an Argonian named Jitumzi. We asked him for work. He said that there might be some work for us, but that he recognizes us, noting that we're from the Fighters Guild. We say yes, but that there isn't any more work left to do there. Jitum says that the Blackwood Company has tons of work, rubbing it into the noses of the Fighters Guild. He thinks we look inexperienced, but says there's a contract that we can do. We should then follow him to the basement's training area. We walk with him and descend to the lower levels. Half of my mind was thinking that this was going to be a setup. We arrive in the training area, and Jitum speaks with us and three other newer members. He says that goblins have overrun the settlement of Water's Edge, and that we're tasked with eliminating them. I remembered that Water's Edge was where Bien Emilian lived, one of the civilians we helped earlier in the story. Before we leave, Jidam approaches us and says that they do things a little differently here. He hands us a potion and says it's a special brew containing Sap of the Hist, a special tree that grows in the swamps of Argonia. We ask him if he's smuggling these bottles in from Black Marsh, and he says they actually managed to bring the whole tree itself into Cyrodiil, and he can harvest directly from it. He tells us that we must drink that before we go, and then Jidam leaves the training area. We ingest the potion, and the journal updates saying that we feel a little funny. Right after, we're teleported to Water's Edge with the other members, and now we're tasked with killing all of the goblins. There are a whole lot of them, but they fall rather easily to our four blades. All of the visible goblins are now dead, but other members are telling us that we have to go inside of the houses and kill the rest. So, I entered inside one of the shacks and killed the goblin. Exiting the shack, something felt wrong. I don't think the goblin was hostile towards us at all. I then went into another house, and there were two docile goblins, something I've never seen before. I killed them, and then it clicked in my mind. These are in fact not goblins, but actually the residents of Water's Edge, and were hallucinating due to the history's sap. Unfortunately, the killing must be completed, so we're forced to enter inside of Bien's house and kill what our character thinks is a goblin. After doing so, we leave the shack and then black out. We wake up in Modron's house. Apparently, we were found unconscious in the streets of Leowin. Our guildmates found us and carried us all the way here, which is certainly a long way to go. Modron asks us what happened and we tell him about the history sap and Water's Edge. He confirms our theory that the sap affects our perception of reality greatly and the fact that the Blackwood Company has a tree at their disposal is unbelievable. He fears for the settlers at Water's Edge and wants us to check up on them. We leave his house and fast travel to Water's Edge. The only person alive there is Marcel Emilian, Bien's father. He has no clue what happened here, but everybody was killed. He doesn't know it was us, which is good, or else it would make this interaction even worse. He thinks it couldn't have been the goblins and that bandits must have been behind this. He says he needs to bury the dead and asks us to leave. We travel back to Madrin and tell him of the disgusting grave news. He doesn't hold it against us. He says that we were under the influence of the history and that there wasn't anything we could have done. He hints at the idea that maybe the other members don't know that they're being brainwashed by the sap, hence the killing of innocent people. He says that now is the time to take action against the Blackwood Company. Thus ending the quest, Infiltration. We speak with Modron again and he gives us our very last assignment. We're to go to the Blackwood Company's hall over in Leowin, find the history, and destroy it putting an end to the company's brainwashing. He says that we're more than likely to come across a great pushback and enemy troops whilst there. We're also probably going to run into Rizakar at some point. Rizakar is a highly trained warrior and will be a very tough challenge. 
We agree to this mission and exit Modrin's house. I'm unsure why Modrin isn't tagging along with us on this one. It's unofficial Fighters Guild business, he knows it's going to be dangerous, and it's to destroy the group he hates so much. Yet, he makes us do it all on our own. We travel to the city of Lewin and enter inside their hub. Instantly, we're confronted by several members of the company. They know we're a spy and they say they're going to kill us. The first member I led out into the street hoping that more would follow and that the guards would help me. Neither of those things happened so we were just duking it out. With some strategic blocking and swinging, we bested him in combat. I went back inside where I faced an archer as well as another warrior. They weren't too difficult to dispatch. I went back outside and looted the dead mercenary's body for a key. He had Jitam Z's room key, the Argonian who initiated us into the company. I went up into his room but there wasn't anything or anyone there. Confused, I left and Jitam Z was outside waiting for us. We faced him in combat and he was about the same difficulty as the first mercenary we fought. Through a lot of swinging and blocking, we bested him and then we went to go loot his body for a key to Rizakar's room. Now, it was time to face the big boss. I went upstairs, unlocked his room, and went inside. He was instantly aggressive, and the fight ensued. He had quite a lot of health. He fought with a company shield, and an enchanted war axe that drained my luck. We traded blow for blow. Each time one of us would stagger, the other would come in for a flurry of attacks. I had to pop a health pot during this fight, or else it would have been too close for comfort. Soon, with enough patience and timing, we best the leader of the Blackwood Company in combat. Looting his body, we find the key which leads down to the basement. Unlocking the door and heading down there, we're met with an insane visual. The history is completely strapped up with tubes and machinery, milking it for a glowing green substance. The machines are roaring with noise. There are two mages guarding the tree. These are likely the mages that Jitam Z was talking about. They were actually pretty difficult to fight too. They conjured a skeleton and a scamp to fight with them and I was getting quite overwhelmed. Soon though, we were able to best one of them and the other died right after. I will say, at this point I was very confused. The journal said that we needed to find a way to stop the machines. We're able to activate quite a few things down here but all of them do nothing. I looked around, swung my sword, cast some spells and still nothing happened. This was the first time I had to use an external resource while doing the Fighters Guild questline. I learned that there were two pipes we need to pick up, and both go on either side of the machines. Once we did that, the machinery caught fire, and so did the history, destroying everything in the basement. We left the basement, and our old friend Maglier was up there waiting for us. He was angry at what we'd done, and said we took everything from him. We faced him down in combat. He was as difficult as Jitam Z was. After besting him, we left the company hall and traveled back to Coral. I'll let the last bit of the guild's in-game dialogue speak for itself. Have you done it? Have you destroyed that foul tree? Well done. With that tree gone, the Blackwood Company is just another band of mercenaries. Cyrodiil is a safer place for what you've done. I want you to take this. May it serve you well. Now, you should tell Velena Danton what has happened. Perhaps she will understand what it is we have done. I believe our work is now finished. You are a fine soldier, my friend. You've made me proud. What is it you want? You were told to stay out of my sight. I'll assume you're here to tender a resignation. You've done what? I, I had no idea it had gotten so bad. How is it you accomplished all of this? With Orion, he was dismissed. I should expel you now. But no, it isn't Orion who is to blame. I fear it is I. I love the Fighters Guild and all its members, perhaps to a fault. I fear my concern for them has made me blind to what's been happening around me. If it were not for you and Orion, I dare not think it. Now we must speak about what you've done and how it will affect any further advancement. Because of your actions, I am hereby stripping you of your rank of champion. You were reckless, foolhardy, and dangerous to yourself and the Guild. They were also brave and necessary. Because of this, 
I am hereby naming you Master of the Fighters Guild, effective immediately. The Guild has passed me by. You are its future. Take your responsibility seriously. I wish you luck. You still have many duties to perform. Your first duty should be to name your second in command. I can think of no one better for this job than Modrin Orion. Should he accept the position, you would be well served. Rely on his wisdom and experience more than I did, my friend. Good luck. Did you speak with Valena? How did she react? Ha! Huh. Made you Guildmaster? Amazing! You earned it, though you'll likely muck it all up. So, what are you going to do with your newfound rank? Me? Bah! I was just getting used to being retired. You can see how good my painting is getting. I'm an old man. I've done my time. Then again, someone has to keep you in line. Make sure you don't bring the guild down around our ears. I'll do it, guild master. Just come to me when you want to assign duties to the guild. I'll make sure they get done. Well, you're in charge. You won't be doing the contracts, but the Master is always paid a percentage of the Guild's monthly take. Check with me monthly to give orders for the month. I'll make it happen. If I don't hear from you, I'll follow the previous month's orders. You can find your monthly stipend in the Master's chest upstairs, along with anything we find that you might find useful. Here's the key. So, what are your first orders, Guildmaster? That's fine. We'll still get some solid revenue, and pick up some new recruits along the way. Not a bad strategy. More revenue means more gold in all our pockets. More men means that we're likely to have more spare equipment around here. Thus ending the Fighter's Guild quest, the Hist, and therefore, that wraps up the entire Fighter's Guild storyline. So, let's talk about the Fighter's Guild. We start off as a lowly associate. We get bossed around and get stuck doing some less than desirable tasks. Eventually, we get introduced to Modern Orion. He is what feels like the second in command to Valena Daunton, the guild's leader. The first few duties he sends us out on, we see little breadcrumbs left behind that not everything is as it seems with how certain events unfolded on these missions. We're soon introduced to the concept of the Blackwood Company. They're undercutting us on contracts and stop at nothing to get them done. All the meanwhile, the duties we take care of for Modrin are straying further and further away from what the guild wants. We're introduced to Varanus, Velena's son. We take him out on a secret mission, it goes well, and he feels on top of the world. Scattered in between, we meet reoccurring characters, like Maglir, a Bosmer who keeps defecting on his contracts, harboring resentment towards the guild. Soon. Everything gets flipped on its head when Varanus dies. He was sent out on an unsanctioned mission by Madrin, behind the back of Velena, and the whole team of around a dozen got killed. We investigate and find out the Blackwood Company was behind the chaotic killing. After reporting back, Madrin gets expelled from the guild and we get demoted. We work our way back up a few ranks and soon get wind that Madrin wants to see us again. Together, we work discreetly to find out more information on the Blackwood Company. We interrogate their members and even infiltrate their ranks. We learn who their leader is, how many members they have, and why they seem to be so powerful. Their ability to get their work done quickly and savagely comes from ingesting modified sap belonging to a magical and special tree called the History. We experience this firsthand when ingesting the potion. We're told we have to kill goblins at the settlement of Water's Edge and every moving, living creature appears to us as a goblin. This brings up the idea that the lower level recruits truly have no idea that they're killing innocent people and animals, hence the slaughter at Forsaken Mine. The last quest involves us storming into their hub, killing everyone inside, and burning down the history. This doesn't end the Blackwood Company, but puts them on the same playing field as the Fighters Guild in terms of abilities. We report back to Modrin and then Valena. Valena appoints us as the new Guildmaster, and we're now the leader. Every month, we can collect our cut of the contracts in a chest, and we can tell our second-in-command, Modrin, where we want to focus our efforts into. Now, 
I'd like to talk about what I did like about the guild and what I didn't like. For starters, the Fighters Guild quests were exactly what I would have wanted them to be. We're essentially swordsmen, mages, and archers for hire. I thought the story was decently developed. I liked how we're introduced to Modron, and he gives us these tasks that start out innocent, but slowly, each new one evolves into something more chaotic and greater than the last. The pacing and ratio of Modron's versus Azan's and Burz's quests to me felt right. Per every quest from the latter, we'd receive at least two from the former. I really enjoyed Maglier's character arc, seeing him spiral downwards with hate and frustration. It was great to see him one final time and have a showdown with someone who never truly liked us. I enjoyed the plot point with Varanus and Velena Daunton. The family is already grieving from the loss of their brother and son, Vitellus. Velena is extra guarded and cautious with Varanus because of it. Modron goes behind her back and gives Varanus work. It's feared he'll become soft. Modron steps too far, however, when a mission Varanus is sent on gets him killed. Velena, riddled with grief, expels Modron and demotes us. I thought that was excellently done. I also really enjoyed the pacing of the Blackwood Company's introduction, build-up, and climax within this questline. It's not immediately shoved down our throats, and it takes the back seat at optimal times. This left me really wanting to pursue the company more than if the plot was always in my face. Finally, I'm going to sound crazy, but I'm not that big into exploring with most games in general, I'm more of a story and plot driven person. But the Fighters Guild did an amazing job at incentivizing me with dungeon exploration. I really enjoyed that extra factor of having a quest that sends me into a ruin or cave. This way, I can loot, kill, level up, and wander around with a purpose. It can be said for both the Mages Guild and the Fighters Guild, but they're great ways of introducing the player to exploring around. Finally, I liked how I was able to complete the guild's storyline without needing to be a higher level. We began the Fighters Guild straight out of the tutorial and finished it at level 4. Obviously, everything in this game scales to your level, but I found it all to be a nice balance of not too easy, yet not so hard. Now, let's get into what I disliked. I really wish we could have battled the Blackwood Company more. We really only run into them as enemies during the third last quest and the final quest. In my opinion, there were plenty of spots where a few Blackwood Company troops could have been added as enemies and it would have built a better base for hatred around them. The same goes for Rizakar, the big baddie of the Blackwood Company. We hear of him multiple times, yet receive no dialogue from him and our only interaction with him is one fight. This one is minor, but I wasn't a big fan of how hard it was to find Burr's Grokash at certain points. The compass never tells us where the contract givers are before receiving the contracts, and what you didn't see was me waiting and searching for Burr's for minutes at a time. There were quests where it would have made sense to send us out with a guildmate. Modron, for some reason, tells us stories of 20 troops embarking on contracts. Yet, here we are clearing out caves of trolls all by ourselves. This especially goes for the third last and last quest. I didn't understand why Modron couldn't come with us. He wasn't on house arrest, it was unofficial guild business, and he deemed them incredibly dangerous. I hope this isn't contradictory to my aforementioned enjoyments of the guild, but I feel like the quests lost their creativity towards the end. The first two quests given to us by Azan were investigating wild animals entering the homes of civilians as well as catching and killing thieves that are breaking and entering into shops. As the quests went on, they started to become monotonous and repetitive. It was usually go to this cave, retrieve an item, bring it back, or completely wipe this mine of trolls. I wish they had kept that same diversity and unique concept for the more intense, higher ranked contracts. I imagine this was the original intention, but likely got cut due to time and disk space, but I would have liked to have received contracts from every single guild hall. Azan, Burz, and Madrin are the only ones to give us contracts, yet there are four other known guild halls throughout Cyrodiil that we don't even enter inside of. I'm assuming this is due to cut content, but if not, it was certainly a missed opportunity. Each city should have been in charge of their respective county's contracts. This next point, I won't go into a whole lot, because while everything is of course my opinion, this one is just extremely preferential. I'm left with wondering what happens to the remaining members of the Blackwood Company. 
Surely they would suspect us, attempt to regrow the tree, insert new members as their leaders, etc. I didn't fully feel like the ending we got is where the story should have stopped. My final point, and I understand it to a degree, is that after all this hard work and running around and being promoted to the leader, we're just rewarded with passive income that I'll likely forget about anyways. The Dark Brotherhood does this too when you become the listener. I understand that there were likely limitations and maybe even cut content, but the arena at least allowed us to fight once a week after becoming Grand Champion. I would have liked to have maybe seen a cave or a fort get raided once a week by several members of the guild, which includes us. So everyone, if you made it all the way here, thank you very much and please let me know down below. This was by far the longest and most difficult video I've ever had to make so far. I hope you enjoyed it, let me know what you liked and didn't like about the Fighters Guild, and until next time, keep on adventuring.